lot of people think that Eisenhower came into office without any experience whatsoever because he hadn't been elected uh, to office, and that's true. Uh, he hadn't been elected to anything. He hadn't run for office before. But Eisenhower had enormous experience, and that experience came from his World War II leadership. Uh, during the war, he led the gigantic military effort against Nazi Germany. And that meant that he had to figure out how to make a big bureaucracy do important, dangerous, hard things. And that gave him a real sense of how to get things done, how to accomplish things. Eisenhower was, of course, uh, a general. He came into office with a great deal of military experience. But what was interesting about him during uh, his presidency is that he was very reluctant to use military force to resolve international conflicts. Even before he was sworn in as president, he traveled to Korea to see the battlefield in Korea as president-elect in 1952. He took one look at the battle lines and he said, there's no way to win this war in, through conventional means. We've got to find a way to end it. And within a few months uh, of his uh, being elected, he found a way to come up with an armistice to end the Korean War. Then in 1954, despite the urging of many of his advisors, he, he kept America out of conflict in Vietnam. France was losing the war there. They wanted American help. Ike said no. So in crucial moments, he drew back uh, away from the use of force in cases where he felt that limited military action would not be successful. Eisenhower was the first and only president to be baptized while he was president. When he became president, he felt American presidents are supposed to be not just political and military leaders, but spiritual, religious leaders. They must be seen to go to church. They must be seen to be faithful. And he was a very spiritual man. So he was baptized in the National Presbyterian uh, Church uh, as a Presbyterian. And he led a real religious revival in America in the 1950s. Uh, he, uh, championed the idea of putting uh, in God we trust on the paper currency. He championed the idea of, of, of saying uh, uh, under God, putting that phrase into the Pledge of Allegiance. He believed America was different from the communists because Americans believed in God. He really didn't know much about the civil rights problems of, uh, of black Americans in the 1950s. But in office, when confronted with crucial decisions, he did the right thing. He pushed forward the desegregation of the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. He appointed Earl Warren to the Supreme Court, and Warren would author the famous Brown versus Board Supreme Court decision that called for the desegregation of public education. Eisenhower's administration passed the 1957 Civil Rights Act, which was the first Civil Rights Act since Reconstruction, since the end of the Civil War, first Civil Rights Act in 100 years. Uh, and most perhaps striking, he sent in uh, soldiers, the 101st Airborne, to accompany black students who wanted to go to school at Little Rock Central High School in Arkansas. On his way out the door, uh, after his presidency was over and John Kennedy had been elected, Eisenhower decided to give a farewell address. It was televised. He told the American public that during his time in office, the U.S. government was compelled to build a military industrial complex. And he was sorry about that. He was worried about it. But he felt it had to be done in order to defeat communism, in order to protect America. We needed a military industrial complex. But he said Americans must be on guard. He said they must guard against the unwarranted influence of the military industrial complex. What he called for was a generation of leaders who understood the military bureaucracy and who could say no to soldiers, who could say no to powerful military officers. 